O come, O Holy Spirit, come. Come, come as holy wind and cleanse us. Come as holy light and lead us. Come as holy truth and teach us. Come as holy forgiveness and free us. Come as holy love and enfold us. Come as holy power and enable us. Come as holy life and dwell in us. Convict us, convert us, consecrate us, until we are holy to our Jesus. Let us worship God. The first thing is in 1 to 8 on Pentecost Day Gathering.
Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the, fa the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I not been with you all this time, Philip? And you still do not know me? <clears throat> Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? <clears throat> the words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not believe me to be the works themselves, very truly I tell you, no one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask of me of anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. When I and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, neither because it neither sees him or knows him. <clears throat> you know him, because he abides in you, and he will be, he will be in you. <clears throat> I will not leave you orphan, I am coming to you. <clears throat> in a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live where you will live. I have said these things in, to you, that I am, am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything, and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave for you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world does. I am not, do, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> Our second reading is Romans 8, 14 through 17. For all who have led, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back on into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the very spirit bearing witness within our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, they're heirs, heirs of God, we are jointly heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. These also are the words of the Lord. Yes. 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 Listen now for God's word as it comes to us in the story of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, 
Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, people of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and that your daughters and sons shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friends, this also is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. slain 
with the Spirit. And we didn't understand because that wasn't our experience. We didn't know what that Pentecostal moment of being filled with the Spirit was like, and they did. And so when we read this story about Pentecost, we wonder, now what is that? What are we supposed to do with that? Well, at the very least, we're supposed to understand that Pentecost is the celebration of the birthday of the church. So happy birthday, uh, this, this day in which something dramatically different happened is one that seemed to uh, cement the Christian community in the terms of its identity. And so for many of us, when we read about Pentecost, we think, well, that's the first Pentecost. Like we refer to the first Easter or the first Christmas. But it's not. Pentecost had been going on for centuries, for millennia, really. Uh, it is a celebration of birth, but it's a celebration that occurred long before the days of Jesus. We can trace the roots of Pentecost all the way back to that other story with which we're very familiar, uh, the day in which Moses received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. And thereafter, the people of Israel celebrated their identity as being the children of God. Pentecost is considered in the Hebrew tradition the birth of a nation. In the Christian tradition, it's considered the birth of the church. Now, up until Christians started uh, taking that celebration as our own, uh, the people who are Jewish, or, well, even, even today, the people who are Jewish celebrate Pentecost as being a, a time seven weeks after Passover. So about 50 days, think of five, the number five, the number 50, as being associated with Penta, uh, Pentecost. And so it is the time when the Jews recognize that they had been liberated from Egypt, and after their time in the wilderness, God gave them the law. And this proved to be a unifying moment for the Israelites. And likewise, in the early church, the Apostle Paul pointed to this Pentecostal story as the day in which the people who followed Christ were unified. We have the expression, uh, we talk about the spirit of the law. If you think about the spirit of the law, that will be a mnemonic way of thinking about Pentecost uh, because it is the birth of the nation that came from the law. God gave the gift of the law and created the Jewish nation, and God gave the gift of the Spirit and created the Christian church. So Pentecost for the Jews was the time when they received the law and had birth of the nation. Pentecost for Christians is the time when the church received the gift of the Spirit and created the church. So look at what happens in our story in the Acts of the Apostle. We're told that when the day of the Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. This was a pilgrimage that the people made once a year, those who were able to gather together for a large service of worship. And remember, the earliest Christians were predominantly Jewish. There were some who had converted to the faith. But because this was a Jewish celebration, as good Jews did, they honored their rituals, their special holidays. And so they gathered together in one place for the celebration of the Feast of Weeks, is what they referred to as Pentecost. And when they were all together in one place, suddenly a sound from heaven came like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And I wanted to have us try to kind of recreate that sound of inhaling, exhaling. But then I thought, oh gosh, we can't do that because of COVID. Uh, but if you will, think of those moments when the wind has caused you to stop still in your tracks because of its power and the knowledge 
words that it is greater than we. That kind of wind took over the worship service that day. And then something else happened. People looked different. The best way I can try to describe these tongues of fire is um, to acknowledge that some people see auras, um, some people see the way people glow or have different colors around them. And I'm seeing head nods because many of you uh, see that. You can see sort of just the way at different times someone's spirit is bright and they actually glow. And sometimes you worry about them because the light is not in them the way it has been. But on this day of worship, it was as if tongues of fire were on all those who had gathered for worship. Something happened that day that stood apart. Pentecost had been happening year in, year out. But on this Pentecost, the first Pentecost after the resurrection, the people were on fire. You know, they just tried to put words to the experience. I've mentioned in other Pentecost sermons that in medieval days, some creative priests, pastors, tried to recreate the sense of being on fire, and they used to throw hot coals from the balcony, but then too many fires broke out, so they stopped doing that. It was just a little too um, literal. But the Spirit was with them. All were filled with the Holy Spirit. And this was the promise of Jesus. Kurt, Kurt read that to us and reminded us that Jesus said, My Spirit will be with you. And the people began to speak in many different languages so that all of them heard in their distinct dialect. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Egyptians and so forth. It was like a reversal of the story of the Tower of Babel. You know that Old Testament story in Genesis where all of a sudden people are speaking and their language is confused and people can't understand each other. But now everyone's speaking differently and they do understand. And they, they can't figure out how that can be. When the Spirit comes upon them and different languages are spoken, it is a moment that unifies the people in their diversity. How bland and boring it would be if we were all the same. And which same would we be? <laughs> what if we were all alike? Who would we choose to be our prototype? And this is a moment when God affirms our diversity, affirms our uniqueness, and rather than being threatened by it, although the people didn't know what to do with it, they came together. The Babel story is one where difference of language is confusing and divisive, and the Pentecost story is one where language is comforting, and somehow it brings the people together. On the day of Pentecost in the New Testament story, we can recognize the formation of the body of Christ as being one body with different parts, and it's represented by the many different people who were present that day. And so Pentecost for the church has become a holiday worthy of celebration. We set it apart. We change the color of the pyramids. We add red in whatever way we can. We want people to know this is a different day. We're pretty good. We're very good about doing that for Easter. Very good about doing that for Christmas. But this is also an essential holiday, if you will, an essential day on our Christian calendar. If you look 
of us have said, it is Pentecost weekend. But secular-wise, we all noted, or most likely noted last weekend, that it was Memorial Day weekend. But the ancient Hebrews celebrated Pentecost religiously. And that's why the followers of Christ were all together in one place, because Pentecost had been celebrated for all those centuries. And because of their faithfulness, Pentecost provided a possibility for the inbreaking of the Holy Spirit. And thereafter, the early church has celebrated Pentecost as its birthday. So an ordinary religious event, that ordinary annual ritual, became an extraordinary event. A time of celebration and festivity became an unforgettable moment when the Holy Spirit arrived as its guest or as its host. But realize that the event itself might not have occurred had it not been for the regularity of the event itself. Everyone knew what to do on Pentecost. They knew the ritual was to gather to celebrate the receiving of the law. And if they were able, they were to gather together in Jerusalem. And they were to gather and they were to worship God even though they spoke in different languages, even though they represented different cultures. In spite of their differences, they believed in the same God and they faithfully worshiped God. And here's a great challenge for us today, is to come together in our differences. So many congregations, so many denominations have winnowed out difference. Uh, there's an article today about COVID weddings, uh, weddings that were postponed and are now being held. And that reception that was planned two and three years ago has gone up in price exponentially. So here are, these, here are these poor couples. Here are these couples who are getting married and they had previously invited, say, a hundred guests, but the cost of the weddings doubled. And so they've had to pare down those lists. And what is the social etiquette of uninviting people? But as Lisa and I were reading that article, we thought there's probably another reason for paring down that list. And mentioned in the article was people <clears throat> realized during COVID who had the places of prominence in their lives. And we realized that divisions that had arisen between friends and family likely also redefined that guest list as it came around today. We become so threatened by difference. Our strongest friendships, the ones with the most grit, are those with whom we disagree. Because in that moment, in that moment, we're saying the essence of you, the essence of your spirit is most important. And what we believe, our opinions, that's peripheral. That's clothing. That's ornaments. What we have is soul connection. It's spirit. People who gathered on Pentecost could not have been more different. And in their difference, they were united. May we be open to a similar spirit. Come, Holy Spirit.